Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 349, Larry here. And who knows who else might be here, because this is audio only this week. How are you doing? It's Mario. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've uh, been here. Not not Super Mario, just plain old Mario. <laughs> and that's why we're audio only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to break any cameras now. No, actually, we're audio. We just had a long day today, a fun day today. Uh, we worked the Route 110 comic show, which is an amazing show. We've been there a few times. It's a lot of fun, and you meet really nice people from you know a lot of different backgrounds. Um Something wrong there? No, I'm sorry. Hold it closer to you. Oh, okay. And, um, <laughs> and hold for edit. <laughs> and some people are actually buying my junk. So I, I kind of did all right. I did more than break even. Uh, you actually did pretty good today. I did pretty good. And most of my pro- most of my sales came from other vendors before we even opened. <laughs> it really did. I, I made about $45 before. And I know that doesn't sound like much. But for me, I was I was selling everything just to get rid of. I wasn't selling Basically, anything. We're priced to move. Yeah, so, uh, and they had a toy uh, donation van there, so whatever toys I, I had or collectibles, I, I kind of donated after. I did the same thing. Yeah. Shockingly enough, they got a bunch of pop vinyls from me. And they, they had the classic Batmobile back again. They the did, Adam yes, the I Adam saw that. Show, that was and, cool, uh, almost hit it. You know, I was backed yeah, into it with my car. <laughs> yeah, com- <laughs> these mini comic conventions, they, they are the closest to, like, the old school conventions I remember as a kid. There's definitely a colorful cast of characters that show up to these things sometimes. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, but yeah, so we had a good time. Uh, actually, gaming wise, I did sell a couple because I have a ton of loose CD game. You know, PlayStation, PS2, every, everything from PS1 to Xbox 360. I have loose because you know, a long okay. time ago, whatever. Um, and I figured, you know what? Let me take some of them and try and see what I can do with it. And I did sell a few. I sold. What did I sell? I sold. Um, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance 1 and 2 Damn. for the PS2. Uh, I was able to sell Castlevania Chronicles and Symphony of the Night. All wow, to the you, same you, guy. That you, one guy that came around before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He um, bought the one who bought the box? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, and then uh, he bought uh, Raiden, Raiden 3, no, Raiden 4 on uh, 360. And I feel like he might have bought another game. And it was a lot of games that I can actually end up repurchasing digitally. And that that's better off because when you have limited space and access, yeah, I totally understand. With certain titles, you gotta kind of. And for advance. me, uh, you know, I'm fine with with uh, digital. In fact, this morning before I told you yeah. before we left, I booted up the P- my PS3 for the first time in God knows how long. I love that system. That was probably like the last new system that I bought. Believe besides this Xbox that you, uh, oh, the I the one got you bought from, from you. me, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, the three six uh three sixty. The uh the PS three had a lot of good stuff on it. I'm wrong. Wii U was the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um but with the three with the PS three before we left today, mm-hmm. I went online because you can still access the PS uh the PlayStation store on the PS three. So I'm like, you know what, let me see what's available. Like it's weird. You can't buy off of the PlayStation store on the PS three with a credit card directly. You have to load it up on the website, and then you like use and the credit. I got you. Okay, you have to load. Yeah, your transfer cash. Basically, credit basically. Yeah, I got you. So okay. I went online and I did a search for mm-hmm. PS One, P S O N E, because there was a bunch, and I have a bunch of PS One classics on my PlayStation Three. Okay, including Castlevania Chronicles, and I think maybe Symphony of the Night, and a bunch of other games. And I did a search, and there's still a ton of PS One games, not. Remasters, not remakes. They are PS1 games mm-hmm. for the PS3 is that, and technically Vita. Is that kind of where like retro players and collectors are right now? So what you know, you like so a couple of years ago, everybody was riding on the NES and and the Genesis, and they were high value, high mm-hmm. demand. Everybody's got some kind of thing with NES or, or Sega now. Is it? Is it? Are we moving now? Oh, I see what you're you know. What I'm saying about. now yeah, yeah, that yeah. that PlayStation One is thirty, almost thirty years old. Like, is that the retro gaming of now? Is, is PS2 the retro gaming of now? And, like, well, we're going archaic with our Atari and NES. Like, that's like the oh, Pyramids of Giza. I'll get into that. Get into that in a second. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know officially. I can say that we're getting close to it. I feel like now the next step is the N64. Because Polymega is sh- shipping, mm-hmm. hopefully soon for Anthony's sake, uh, their N64 module. 
right. to play original cartridge, legacy cartridges, as they're called. Uh, and Analog announced a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, uh, that they're doing a uh, N64 that they're calling the Analog okay. 3D. So I think Nintendo uh, 64 is next, but I think after that, we're going to start to see some of these CD-based games. Oh, because if I remember correctly, PlayStation it was 95. It came out in 95, and N64 was 96. And Saturn take, was yeah. also... Like, they all came out around the same time. Yeah. It just so happened Saturn and PS1 were all disc big and Because it was a big deal. I remember reading back then that N64 was sticking to cartridge format. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird remember one. That? Yep. So... Nintendo Do they very... all lump into that phase of retro oh, I see. Oh, interest okay, okay. right now? So, you know? I'm trying to think. That would probably yeah. be one, two, three. And I'm doing this off the top of my head, people. So, yell at me all you want. I want to say, like, the N64, the PlayStation, are, like, fourth generation they're considered. Maybe. Okay. yeah. Again, I'm doing it off the top of my head. So, maybe because we're in eighth generation now, I think. It's either th- yeah, either third, fourth, or fourth. So, fourth, fourth, um, but in any event, yeah, they all yeah. kind of came around at the same time. And I think I think that's what's going to be next. But I also think disc-based systems yeah. are going to stop being next. It seems like it's when a very specific age group gets into an age. Oh, totally. There's totally. nostalgia yeah. for so like when for us it was Atari, NES. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much Master System because nobody really had it, but Genesis, and that's us when we were like nine to fourteen years old. And then Bell Bottoms so now, came back. The, the the slightly younger generation than us when they were nine to fourteen they it was N sixty four like I was already uh, almost I was eighteen when uh, PS one nineteen when N sixty four came out but it seems like the eleven to fourteen year olds that came up with those systems first PS one N sixty four it seems like the nostalgia I I, I mean I'm I'm only going by this because I noticed my algorithms on YouTube <laughs> are showing more PS1 games and and memeing about like the polygon graphics okay, and uh, yeah. more N64 stuff I'm seeing I'm seeing GoldenEye on Xbox and I'm noticing that there's more of that right now you know okay. and then when they grow into our age group the next 9 to 14 year olds who had PS2 that's the way it seems like it goes with me it's, it seems like it's a uh, Okay, I can you know, see what you're talking about. You know, uh, it, it might be. Again, least, it's nothing. Yeah, I could be wrong. Nothing about official. That. Yeah. But, um, but nevertheless, to kind of to hark back. So I went on, and there's a really good chunk of games available for the PS3 and PlayStation Vita. Uh huh. Um, a bunch of which I own. So, you know, I'm gonna start converting. Like, I think, like in 2024, I'm gonna start moving a lot of games that I have f- that are still physical okay. on from PS1 up to 360, I think I'm going to try and start doing them digitally. And I'll, that will count for remakes. Not mm-hmm. as much remakes, but remasters. I, you know what I mean? Like like Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Not the remake Final Fantasy VII that the I had, but maybe the remastered Final oh, Fantasy VII. Oh, wow, okay. So, you know, stuff like that. But, um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll start converting that. But uh, I was able to sell some discs today, which was good. Uh, I still got a ton left. I mean, all the ones next to you there, that's basically all the collection. Wow. The physical PS1, PS2. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to see what I'm seeing here. Yes, that's why we're audio only today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but uh, besides that, again, today was a good day. Um, this week, this past week's been pretty good. I have gotten shipping confirmation that my Atari 2600 Plus okay. is on its way. Uh, along with the paddles that I ordered. Okay, cool. Yeah, my, And uh, the two games, because I also bought Berserk Enhanced for the Atari 2600. I used to love that game. Yes. And Mr., uh, what do they call it? Mr. Dip and Dash? Mr. Do and Don't? I don't remember the name of it. I forgot what it's called now. They have a couple of original. Yeah, it's a new game. New, it's new a titles, new game, uh, yeah. For so Atari. Th- those are on their way. Um, and I also got... From Limited Run, that was my knee, if you heard that. I thought that was your neck. Wow. <laughs> uh, I picked up, uh, I didn't pick up, but was Limited Run. SNES? Super Nintendo game. Wow. Uh, what is this? Rendering Ranger. Never heard R2. of that. R2. Yeah, neither have I, but it's pretty cool. It's a black cartridge. like It's uh, like a clear black cartridge, you know? too. Yeah. They never it. did a gold cartridge for Link to the Past, did they? There was never anything like that. Like a, For the N64? No. No, not N64. I mean, uh, uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, or even did they ever do that for, for the N64? No, N64 Zelda's? they did for Zelda. Oh, yes. wow. Okay. But you're right. They, they, as far as I know, they never did a gold cart for Super Nintendo. In fact, the first colored cartridge I remember was the red cartridge for Spider-Man Venom Maximum Carnage. The first Spider-Man Venom game. That's the first one I remember where the cartridge was a different color. It was a bright red, which I don't own, actually, shockingly. 
Okay. But that was the first one that I remember. Wow. I'm looking at your ex- expanding Master System collection right it's now. It's getting there. That's cool. I haven't played Monopoly yet. That's the newest one. That, I I loved that version of Monopoly <laughs> back in the day. It, it was, uh, I didn't even know. We went to the store the other day and uh, we saw a Genesis one, right? We saw, wasn't there one for the Sega Genesis? Oh, yeah, there was. Yep, I yep, never yep, even yep. realized there was one for the Genesis. I mean, that, or I knew one, I'm just everything. senile. Yeah, there yeah. had to have been a Monopoly for everything. Yeah. If you think about it. And they make every kind of Monopoly there is today. Oh, forget about it. Yeah, but I see you got a, a, a nice Saturn collection, a nice Sega CD. You got a, I'm getting there. an impressive... Uh, I got to redo that wall again, where yeah, all my the, games are. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, I think with collecting physical stuff, it's got to start to become a more niche thing. You got, like, a, you know, you know what's easy to get on emulation. NES... Genesis, all that stuff is easy, but like when it comes to certain things like Master System, Sega CD, Turbo Graphics, that those are kind of niche. Not only that, yeah. but I still I can have I got ROMs, admittedly. Uh, okay. Um, I got ROMs and multiplying, and um, Lovely. you know, <laughs> I'll still buy a physical version of the game if I love it that much. Right. Like right now, I'm playing through on a ROM on my analog mini NT Noir. Um, Godzilla, Monster of Monsters, the worst subtitle for any video game ever. Why didn't they go with just the title of the American movie, King of the Monsters? I don't know, but it's... So, oh, probably because it was another game, probably, yeah. called King of the Monsters. Are you thinking of the... It was SNK, it was called the, King of the Monsters? Yeah. I thought it was called, like, something else of the monsters. No, no, it was King of the Monsters. Yeah, because those were cool games. But, uh, no, they were very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. And that's what I said on the Godzilla episode. I'm like, Godzilla... And I'm, I'm not making this another Godzilla episode. Anthony would kill me. But, um... Uh, Godzilla lends himself to be in fighting games, one-on-one fighters. They could like he deserves to like, be in those. If they can do X Men and Marvel superheroes and have that really funky style of fighting, and if you remember those older ones like X Men, like the real oh, exaggerated, yeah, yeah, yeah. Suit, they could imagine Capcom doing a Godzilla. Oh, my fighting game! God, forget it. That would be like actually, I'm envisioning now Capcom like side trolling Godzilla game. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like no, I that, exactly that could have been a lot yeah. of fun. Um, but I, I was just wondering why they called it. I wonder if was it a rights issue at the time? Maybe with Toho, Who knows? maybe because uh, Legendary has a King of the Monsters from 2019, right? Well, but I'm talking about a game from 1987. It's 87, <laughs> and the only other one that was called King of the Monsters was or the Raymond Burr re-edited version of the uh, yeah, original yes. movie, right? Yeah. No, that was Godzilla Raids. No, it wasn't. No, Godzilla King of the Monsters had you're Raymond right. Burr you're right. Yeah. Raids again was just a direct sequel. Yeah. But again, this is not a Godzilla episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but I should have done How come one with they you? don't have a lot of King Kong game? Oh, I understand that there's a King Kong game out now that's so bad. Oh. Like they they this in a Gollum game, right? Like that's kind of the big. Like, I terrible games out right now? I heard, I read about it. I saw it, like, I see it for sale. King Kong something or other. Yeah. And Skull they say Island, it is right? or, yeah. a, something like that. Yeah. It is atrocious. I haven't seen gameplay of it. I haven't tried it. But I heard it is terrible. I think there was an NES King Kong game. There was not an NES King Kong. Well, unless it was. There was an Atari King Kong game. That okay. I actually owned. And there was a PS2 Peter Jackson adaptation. Well, yes, there right? was that version, but we're talking like original. I'm just thinking there's not a lot of King Kong games. There really weren't it. that many. And the King Kong on Atari was basically a Donkey Kong ripoff. And Donkey Kong, in turn, was sued by the. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And lost. And lost, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, interesting stuff, Larry. Yeah. yeah definitely. The, the thing I kind of want to uh, talk about today mm-hmm. is uh and this is something that me and aunt have talked about doing and one day down the road we will you know anthony's um obviously not here this week he's right, yeah. in the process of settling down in his best new place of, so of luck, obviously mazel tov. and um we're always talking about doing s- episodes or something with movies based on video games uh whether it's like an mst3k type running commentary or we just do an episode and we just review a movie okay something so the other day or last week i was really bored and a lot of the um the um black friday deals are starting to kick in nice so i'm like you know what let me go on and see what's available crumb <laughs> yeah this is my this is my regular i, I pulled up on uh, Good voodoo pick. 
on Vudu some of the, mm. a lot of movies that I picked up recently, including a personal favorite of mine, Bebe's Kids. I haven't seen that. You remember that, that was movie? Uh, Robin Harris. It was, the, but he died right before it came out. Right I before think. he died, two years before this came out. Yeah, he um, someone else he, plays he, him. He he died after the first house party, something like that. Yeah, yeah, because he wasn't in the second one. So, and just to go through some of the movies that I did pick up that are video game related, um, just to show what we're going to run the gambit. Yo, yo. Yes, my as your original. My you like the Warriors, too. huh? I again, it was cheap, so I picked it up. That's Walter Hill. So I got to lend you Streets of Fire, and that's the regular version. I, I am no longer doing like unrated and director's cut versions. There's no point. No, I was doing them for a long time. Man. They were cool, but a lot of times the regular version, the theatrical version, is way better than. The director's cut or the unrated I, I version. I think what happens is you see the movies for the first time when you're young and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then you're in your 20s and a director cut comes out and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then you get to but, an age where time becomes a thing and you're just kind of like, I just want to watch the original. But cut. not only oh, that, yeah. if if you saw them, if you, if you never saw the movie and the first time you see it, it's like you just buy it on DVD yeah. and it's the unrated. Because back in the day, everything was always the unrated version on DVD. Like so, you don't know, know. what the yeah, theatrical version was. Yeah, you're right about was. that. Yeah. So, so here are some of the games, uh, games, uh, movies that I picked up based on games. And trust me, folks, some of them are really good, and some of them Look, are absolutely terrible. There's no accounting for taste, my friend. You, you mine. We like what we like, and if you have a broad range, you can like things that are high art, and you can like things that are lowbrow. You, you have room for it, and it's up to you. I have never purchased a movie based on how well it is on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Look, sometimes. It'll just happen to be that you're, you're in agreement with what what they are, and sometimes if you're yeah, not, right. big deal. Look, UHF is not a oh my well god, but it's a movie, classic. It's awesome, and it Midnight is... Madness is the greatest movie ever made. Would and... you stop trying to promote that? This and is push a, this is movie. a retro gaming channel. Let's get to your movies, and we'll get <laughs> back to Anthony's the... head is exploding. Absolutely. So here's some of the stuff that eventually me and Anthony will get to because Mario is not going to be allowed on the podcast anymore. Uh, I picked up, <laughs> and this was a movie. I'm pretty sure went straight to um, the Sci Fi Channel. Dungeons and Dragons 2, Wrath of the Dragon God, came out in 2005. This was the sequel of the original Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out. The one with Marlon Wayans. I remember that. Which was a good movie. Mm -hmm. This one, not so much, from what I remember. Um, I heard the new one wasn't as bad as people made it. Oh my god, the new uh, Honor Among Thieves was fantastic. Really? Oh, I loved it. Because it involved, at some point, a gelatinous cube. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you lost me on that I, I'm not familiar with the Dun- Dungeons and Dragons lore um, I picked up Mark Wahlberg's um, movie Max Payne a 2008 uh, movie uh, a game and a lot of these movies I never played the game so it's going to be interesting going into the movies I heard about Max Payne game I remember them uh, yeah they made that movie Max Payne but I heard that movie wasn't bad Oh, it might not yeah. be. It might it might be pretty yeah, okay. It might be pretty good. I mean, the they Tomb got Raider, a, I see you got. They got a sick. Don't jump ahead. Let me do this in order. Oh, damn. All right. All right. <laughs> just looking, just observing. I got Lara Croft Tomb Raider: The uh-huh. Cradle of Life. Which, That's the sequel, right? The sequel, which yeah. I somehow never owned before, which I'm shocked at. Um, a movie that is a rough one to go through: House of the Dead from 2003. Never saw that. With that, that and Alone in the Dark, I don't have Alone in the. Do I have Alone in the Dark? I might have Alone in the Dark. You know what I I noticed that doesn't seem to have a lot of play anywhere? The movie we saw uh, last year, that, that Resident Evil Raccoon City. Oh, Welcome to Raccoon City? I got that. You have that too? Uh, it's somewhere here. There it is. I never see that anywhere since I, I like left theaters and that was it. I didn't know. Uh, I've seen it a couple times on. What what what? I mean, is it as bad as everybody made it out to be? Do you think? Well, I, I found it. My personal opinion before let you. I found its biggest crime. Was that it was boring? I didn't find it boring. I actually enjoyed Welcome to Raccoon City because yeah. it, 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 to me, it merged like the remakes of Resident Evil One and Two, yeah. which I really enjoyed. He, all right, so for me, if you're ma- like if you're making a video game, a movie based on a video game, yeah, and you basically are pulling elements of the game out of the game and just throwing it on the screen, mm-hmm. take all of my money. That's what I'd rather see. I got like you. I don't want some reimagining Look, of the of the movie or of the game where it doesn't make sense. That's see, I only played the original one and the original Resident Evil Two on PS One, yeah. so I vaguely remember things. And when I watched the movie, the things that I liked about it was it wasn't like the Mila Jovovich movies, which I didn't like any of them. Oh my god, the first and, one was fantastic. I know there's a fan base for it, but I just as they got on, I, though, I got couldn't weird. connect because I never saw. The, 
the games in them. Yeah. Uh, I at least was That's able to see... That's what I'm talking about, yeah. ...the games here, uh, and some of it I just didn't remember, and, and for the most part, uh... Like I said, it was just it was hard to sit through. Yeah. That's what I remember. It was just boring. Um, so House of the Dead, I picked up mm-hmm. Cloak and Dagger from 1984, which is them playing an, an Atari game of the same name, Cloak and Dagger. Wow. Okay. Uh, I picked up Mortal Kombat Legacy, which is kind of like I think it was like a made for TV movie uh, from 2011. I got a thought. You got me thinking about something. Uh-oh. So you know how we like to label things Christmas movies that are not necessarily Die about Hard. Christmas. Like Die Hard, Gremlins, things like that. Batman Returns is considered a around. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, yeah, yeah. I know you know what I'm saying? Yeah, these are Christmas Would movies. Would you yes. consider The Last Starfighter a video game movie because it's about an arcade machine that's really a training tool? So you, it's a movie about a video game. That is a training tool for a real space war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are movies based, based on off. video okay. game. You know okay. what I mean? But this I hear what you're talking about. Because trust yeah. me, there's a lot of movies that aren't listed here that that weren't on sale. There was uh, Stay Alive was a great movie okay. with Frankie Muniz where like they're playing this horror game on like a PlayStation. And when they die in the game, they're dying in real life. So, you know, stuff like that. There's Game Box 1.0, which is some terrible game with Tope- uh, movie with Topanga from Boy okay. Meets World. I know so. I had seen one night late on cable The Legend of Chun Li, and it was one of the worst thing, <laughs> things I ever like. It was just terrible. Like there was no redeeming value. I didn't recognize it as a video game. I didn't recognize it as a good movie. I didn't recognize it as anything but junk. Uh, because there was no tournament, unlike mm-hmm. the the live action Tekken movie, and I don't which even, involves a tournament. I don't even think that was on a Tuesday either. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, you I did like the Tekken anime. I remember seeing yeah, it. That was a mini those. series, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, Silent Hill one and two, Silent Hill, Silent mm-hmm. Hill Revelation, and I'm not into horror, but I'll take those movies. Did they ever do anything? Uh, remember the game Parasite Eve? That seemed to lend itself to like. I don't a think movie. they did a movie. Now that I know, it of. was based off novels, though. I believe Probably, it was based yeah. off Japanese novels. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's Tekken 2. Okay. Yazuka's Revenge. Wing Commander. Mark Hamill's in yes. it, isn't he? <coughs> yes, he is. Excuse me. Uh, Mila Jovovich. was Grand Turismo? I wanted to see that. I haven't seen it yet. I bought it, but I haven't I, seen it I'd yet. I'd like to see that if you... And you, that it seems really cool. Uh, okay. Monster Hunter, I never played those games. But another movie with Mila Jovovich. And, of course, Mila Jovovich, as I mentioned last week uh, in our discussion about the, the newly announced Super... Um, um, not Super. Legend of Zelda movie that's going to be coming out. Okay. Live action. Um, to me, if you're already established playing a character in a world, do not play another character in the same world. Mila Jovovich was in six Resident Evil movies. She played Alice. I do not want to see her in Monster Hunter, but unfortunately, I will have to watch her in Monster Hunter. Wow. I, I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gran Turismo, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Uh, I gotta but check that out. That's not Jake based Gyllenhaal. on the original it's, computer. Game, no, it was based it? on the Sands it's of based Time. Based on the 3D version. Prince right? of Persia, yeah. Sands of Time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Assassin's Creed is another one I gotta watch with Michael okay. Fassbender. I never realized they had so many. I tell out of the loop I am, folks. <laughs> and uh, then some of the more re- like the recent Mortal Kombat. I didn't like uh, it. Hitman. Didn't with, even know uh, Timothy Olyphant, which should be good. Uh, and Uncharted was really good with Spider Man. With Tom Holland. Tom Holland, okay. yeah. So that was a really good movie. So wow. those are the new ones that I picked up. Um, and I, I probably have some... I realized there's so many. I probably have some... Oh my God, there's a ton of them. I think I have others. You got Dick on, Tracy on too. That's a cool... That's, that's a Dick Tracy, I saw, gem. Yeah. I saw in the theaters with my gr- grandfather and his girlfriend. I saw that in the theaters, and that was the first movie I ever went to where it was basically me and my father, and the whole theater was empty. <laughs> 30 seconds. No more Dick. 30 seconds. Um, I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. I bought something here on Prime but I don't know where my movies or my list of movies are so this is now useless. Uh, yeah, Street oh, Fighter does have a couple of good animes. That's uh, Street Fighter 2 the animated and, movie? And I, Phenomenal. It's a great movie and I'll tell you what Fatal Fury has a couple of good animes too. Mm-hmm. Oh okay so what I did was I also on Prime I you know like wish list a lot of games. Okay. Uh, movies. One of which, Far Cry, based on the Far Cry video games. See, I, that's how out of the loop I am. I didn't even know that was a game series. Sorry, folks. Uh, Dungeon, I am out of the loop. <laughs> uh, in the Name of the King, a Dungeon Siege Tale. Okay. That came out in 2008 with um, uh, uh, der, the guy from Crank. Um, Jason Statham? Thank you. Yep. Uh, Postal, with uh, our, uh, our favorite uh, movie director, Uwe Boll. 
That guy who did the, the other... Um... Did garbage. Yeah. Well... Uh, uh, House of the Dead 2. I uh, Thumbs up here. Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark 2. So there's De Need for Speed. I'm still waiting for there's that. There's so many. That one's I, not I, on I'm sale Hitman, yet. I know those games. These are the ones I... Warcraft. Warcraft. Which I enjoyed. Well, I watched Warcraft. So they, this is, this it. is it, it's a, like, uh, I remember those Assassin Fist YouTube episodes. Those yeah, they just cool. put them all together, yeah. Yeah, those were pretty cool. So, and that's um, mostly, yeah, and everything else is just, I don't think I have anything specific on, I could have sworn I bought Mazes and Monsters. And it's driving me nuts and I can't find it now. Can you do it under research? The time, I could, but. Not now, yeah. The so this it, 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 it really is, it's. So. Yeah, there's a lot, and it's funny enough, a uh, uh, friend of mine, actually a friend of the show, uh, Brandon, uh, the podcaster as well, he, um, he he texted me yesterday, he's like, I need a, I need a good video game movie. Because he texted me, he goes, Double Dragon is completely unrated, uh, uh, under yeah. underestimated. Uh, or under, what's the one? If you watch it as a so bad, it's good. Oh my god, the, yeah, the know, movie's fun. The Van Damme movie is a pretty good uh, double <laughs> impact, where he plays twins in that. I think that was also inspired by Double Dragon. But uh, I told him, though, I reached out to him, like, how about you try Tekken? And he kind of texted back to me, and he's Good like, pick. this movie's phenomenal. <laughs> we, um, I don't know if you remember, some time ago, and it kind of went dead. Um, who's the guy he's in Dune, and he's he's one of the guys in the new Star Wars movies, the actor. Oh, I know of... of Poe Dameron about, know, is his name yeah, in Star but, Wars yeah. I forgot his name at the moment. Oscar Isaac. Okay. Not long ago, maybe two, three years ago now, it was announced that the guy from Skull Island would be, uh, he was picked by Kojima to do Metal Gear Solid, and it's this Oscar Isaac. Oh, that movie's stuck been, in. It's, is it that in development hell? Is that dumb? Probably. Because, uh, I, I, Probably. you know, they, they had a guy picked, and they had all these uh, storyboards ready, and like, that's not an easy movie to... to None of them to. really are. But there's a few mm. movies that are like in production or whatever, pre-production, you want to call them. Um, but yeah, it was kind of fun. Like I said, I was searching around, saw some stuff on sale, picked up the good, picked up the bad, picked up the ugly. It, it, well, it seems, you know, uh, and not to get into any reasons or, or whatever, with, with this sort of vacuum now with uh, these comic book movies kind of... They kind of hit the, the wall. Downslide, yeah. hitting the wall... And and Star Wars as well hitting the wall. Reasons don't matter. It seems like there's a vacuum for the popcorn movie right now. Right now, your your I I'm your buddy Anthony's gonna get me pissed. Off. <laughs> right right now, <laughs> poor Anthony. It seems like the big green guy is slated. He could fill that vacuum, but oh, I, I cannot wait. I don't think one. so because there's a lot, but it's but maybe there's an opportunity for the video game movie to kind of fill that spot. We'll see. You know, you know, they started really bad, but they've really picked up lately. I would say it, since... It just, I'm looking at all the movies you have yeah. there. I never realized there were that many out. Yeah, I would say mm. since... I would think video game movies really were ended up on the upswing, in my opinion, yeah. since Detective Pikachu. Because that movie was great. Uh, and one of the reasons why I think it was great, again, my theory or my thing... It's okay to pull the Pokemon straight out of the video game and put them in the real world. No matter how goofy they look, you don't need to make them, you don't need to try and make them look realistic. Right. Just put okay. fur on them and you're good to go. Okay. And that, I think that worked. And also with Sonic, the backlash from the Sonic, uh, the first Sonic trailer. It seems like it really... With the way he was animated. It seemed like it hit a new level. Yeah. I mean, look, and I'm not talking about my own personal opinion. It seemed like it did hit a level when Sonic came out and people were that happy about it. I'll say that. I, uh, oh my God, that Sonic move. Both Sonic on movies are great. Uh, I don't watch a lot of them. I don't know about a lot of them. And most of the ones that I do watch, I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to be contrarian or anything <laughs> here. I personally don't like... It's just, I know I, you don't. I, I, and I do try to, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> For a movie that a lot of people didn't seem to like, I just watched this uh, on my daughter's, my youngest recommendation, Five Nights at Freddy's. I know, I gotta watch that. Don't right, say so anything, yes. I'm not gonna talk about anything in the movie because I know you haven't seen it. I'm only gonna say this. I was half-heartedly enjoying the first half. Something happened just about at the middle of the movie where I turned it off and I was like, I really don't want to finish this. <laughs> But I don't know the story of the movie. So when my youngest explained, look, it's all part of the story, just try to watch it again one night and finish it. So when I did what she asked, everything that I thought was happening didn't happen. <laughs> I was glad about that, and it, and it made for... I actually enjoyed it. I, I would say it's it's one of the few that I do enjoy. Um, 
So uh, I, I don't know where I where that lands with me. Uh, I played the games once on Game Pass, and I was terrible at them. <laughs> so it reminded it me of like it freaked me out. It reminded me of like Night Trap and games like that. Yeah, I played yeah. it on my. It started as a mobile game, right? And I played it on my mobile, and I it freaked me out. It legit freaked me out. Huh. So, uh, but I, I do want to see that movie though, I, and I have to see that movie. Check it out so. when you can, and I want to watch that other one we talked about with you uh, that I already forgot Tekken? what it was. Not Tekken. Cloak we and Dagger. Not Cloak and Dagger. Maze of Monsters. I've seen that. It was one of the movies you had, when I, and I said, look, when you do decide to watch this, let me know. I'd like to see it too. And you'll hear it again on the podcast. So <laughs> you'll remind what, you me after I the show. you think I listen back on this thing? Yeah. What, are you kidding me? Uh, I think I'll you cursed once. I have to go back and find that. I apologize, people. <laughs> um... Where are you at? What what are you playing lately? Uh, I am playing Godzilla, Monster of Monsters, on and the that, NES. Okay, so we're you're and still on that. That's the old stuff. Recently, I'm playing Super Mario Brothers Wonder on Switch, mm-hmm. and I haven't had a chance to actually sit down and play it properly. Super Mario RPG, the new one, the oh, remastered they re-released one, released it, and then yeah, I hear just it dropped. So I, I'm going to try and play that this week. I'm I'm literally nowhere with any playing right now. Uh, just things in life, you know, going on. Life uh, 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 finds a way. What is that thing on the Xbox for 1,400 games that I bought recently? Oh, Antrim Arcade. So that's the last thing Which I just touched. lost 27 games. They are deal... And they came... To be fair, Antrim Arcade is very open. They'll okay. tell you everything that's going on. All right. And they dropped a video on YouTube saying, look, we tried our best. We did everything we could. We could not come up with a deal with Warner's. Warner Brothers or Warner Brothers Interactive. Okay. So they're get, actually as of now, as of last week, the game's already been removed. All but right, the, but no, but we're talking about Mortal Kombat and like some other heavy, heavy hitters. Yeah. I think Smash TV might be another one. Well, I um, would miss that one because I enjoyed that. Yeah. So now it doesn't mean they won't come back. It's but just, for now they yeah. look. But still, fourteen hundred games, um, and you're gonna find some good ones. So yeah, yeah I you should was try playing, and play it. Well, I well I was saying that was the last thing I kind of messed around with. So I was playing on that the Star Wars uh, Vector Graphics yes, arcade. Yes. Yes. I was playing the arcade Rygar. I'm I'm one of the, these button mashing brainless guys that like to stay, play the brawlers. So I was probably playing Double Dragon, Double Dragon Two. Uh, but it's been a while. So the last thing I actually touched, Larry, and you were there when we went to the store. Um, what's that new retro store we just found? Oh, uh, uh, Retro Source Long Island. Retro Source Long Island had a cool little Genesis setup. And so if I had to pick a game and everything that I've played in recent memory uh, that I recommend for the month, from, from my end, is a Sega Genesis Truxton. I never played this as a kid. I always saw it on the shelves with the tags and Toys R Us and stuff. Never bought it back then. I wish I did. Uh, I do enjoy shoot 'em ups as as horrible as I am at this. Oh, I suck at it. Yeah, them. and but I love them. I've played now the arcade and the Genesis from the Mini Two. Mm-hmm. I, I really think it's a fun and it's difficult, but it's approachable difficult. You know what I mean? Like totally. You you can develop real skill sets. As, there's really not a, anything cheap about how the enemies come at you. Like, you, you can get around it and, de- and develop some skill mm-hmm. with it. And it's it's a lot of fun, great weapon upgrades. And it reminds me a lot of the amazing shoot-em-ups on the Turbo Graphics. So, oh, my um, God, I can't wait. Duo, analog, mm-hmm. please. Stop putting out new colors for the analog <laughs> pocket. I don't need them anymore. So, Ship the Duo. I'm dying so, to play my Turbo Graphics I, games. I know everybody's sick to death of the Brawler, so I won't, I'm going to go with a shoot-em-up with, for the listeners. Are you bringing back Game of the Week? Because we uh, haven't done it in two weeks. This is my game of the week. Okay, you, fair if, enough. If we'll do want. it for everybody. Why not? Yeah, uh, so it's Truxton for Trux- Sega Genesis. Truxton yeah. on Genesis. Do it. Mm-hmm. And with that, I told you, if you want, you can have my Hyperkin Retron 77 to play 2600 games. I'm not worried about that right now, but thank you. That's very, very generous. Um, well, I don't need to get rid of it soon. <laughs> bring it down one day. You know? I won't say no. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, I just don't know if I'm going to get in the habit of buying Atari games again, even though... <laughs> They are the, the most cost-effective one to buy out there right now, folks. You can get a Atari game for two bucks. For the life so, of me, I cannot find 7,800 games, and I don't know why they're not out there. Again, the, the in the wild, in yeah. the wild, yeah. I can easily buy. All right, Mario, tell them where they can find us. I, I, I on Twitter. That there's not even Twitter anymore. I'm Twitter tw- X, Instagram yes, X, uh, you can- <laughs> Apple Podcasts, <laughs> right? Uh, you see how good and adept I am at all this stuff. Where can we find you, Larry? You can find us mm. everywhere. Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast. On Instagram, at Retro Gamers Podcast. On X, 
weeks at Retro Gamers Pod. You can email us, email at theretrogamers.com. And of course, you can watch us on YouTube, or this week, listen to us on YouTube at Retro Gamers Podcast. And wherever you are, please like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bells. Ever so you know when new episodes drop. Uh, and with that, uh, Mario, thank you very much. Hey, thank you for having me. It's always fun to come on. It really is. And uh, Ant will be back next week for a big, uh, trust me, it's not going to be that big, 350th episode. Uh, but with that, Aunt, uh, Mario, again, have a good one. You're not you good. You're Mario. Who are you? Who am I, Larry? Who am I? I'm just Mario. Not super, just plain. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. 